Before we get started, please take the time to like, add, and subscribe to our pages on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and iTunes. Also, please leave us a review. We can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Clink. Clink. What's up, what's up, everybody? It is, again, that same time of the week. It has come around. Some people call it hump day. Some people call it wet nest day. Some people call it like mercredi. But we call it wonderful wandering Wednesday. <laughs> and, and, and as per usual, it's me, the Reverend, here chatting it up with our good friend from the state of montana you know him as ranger zach i know him as zach but it's just ranger zach how we doing oh fan diddly tastic as they say and that is the simpsons because they they've been predicting some shit man uh ocean gate man why would you even name that put that on the submarine why would that sticker why like why would you get in a submarine that said Ocean Gate right on it? Uh I don't really look at the names when I'm deciding if I'm gonna get in a submarine. Uh for me, I'm looking for more of like you didn't just get the parts at Camping World. Uh, you know, you you spent you a little extra. Fun. We don't have a Logitech controller like being the main source of uh, you know, control for this puppy. There's a, there's a lot of things that went on with that submarine that uh, I'm not necessarily getting to the name of the submarine itself by the time I'm going, uh, yeah, that's a big fat no for me. Well, you're a safety guy. And I mean, diving down that deep is, is scary, let alone. I mean, those are true, in a sense, true explorers, because that's exploring. Those hard to reach places, space is a hard to reach place. You know, it happens and it, it shows us that life is still fragile. And maybe there are some places that are just better left untouched, better left, let them be um, some ecosystems that that is for sure. But that's not that's not what I'm here to talk about today, man. I'm I'm having a wonderful time. We're out here. The weather's getting nice. It's starting to be July finally, you know, and really be warm uh, and get that outdoor time, get some fishing in, get some exploring and um i'm really trying to get down to jackson hole i'm really trying to get over to uh yellowstone some more maybe possibly the bear tooths who knows who knows where you may find ranger zach but uh, you can always stay stay in touch uh on this on the instagrams for sure i love it i love it i'm actually i'm skedaddling uh this weekend um i'm heading on over to the bend area i'm not going to be in bend I'm going to be just outside of a little town called Lapine. Oh, um, shit. Yeah, I'm going to a totally different spot that I'm, than I've really gone in that area. Um, ironically, this was not part of the plan when I picked this spot, but I'm actually really close to uh, some hot springs that you have to hike to. So I'll probably be doing that on one of the evenings. So I'm That's I'm actually kind of excited. I'm just rolling up to a uh, lake and I'm going to I'm going to swim, I'm going to bike, I'm going to run, I'm going to chill. Is it training or is it the competition? Training. This will be just purely training. Ah, uh, so it's just pleasure. This is a pleasure trip. This is that's why the hot springs in the evening, you know, I went and got uh, all my uh, stuff at the store today. You know, food, all that fun stuff. Because uh, when I go for training, I have to take more calories with me. That makes sense, especially if you're swimming in that open water. You're going to burn some calories for sure, which would be good. Yeah, it'll be the bike and run that actually burns the most calories. Uh, but the yeah. open water swimming is something I need to do more of because open water swimming uh, sucks. It just yeah. sucks. <laughs> Well, waves are no friend. Yeah, it it just it sucks. That's that's just where it is to it. But no, we're not here to talk about small trips. 
um, like that, mainly because they haven't happened yet. The uh, two things that we've talked about already today. No, right. we're here to talk about uh, more Iceland. It's hard. It's hard to not keep talking about Iceland. We just got back. It was such an amazing trip. Um, so that we're finishing up good old part three. We're bringing in the Wandering Ways review. And then we're also doing a special thing because, I mean, why not? We, uh, we, you know, we, we do it. It was such a great trip. We're doing top five favorite things from Iceland. Uh, you know, we haven't shared these with each other. So it will be, it be will good. be a lot of fun. Um, be good. But I got it. We got some good ones. Let's start it off with our Wandering Ways reviews. Uh, For people who haven't, if this is your first time with the Wandering Ways review, we got different categories. Uh, It's like going to Yelp, except uh, probably better than seeing uh, some of the reviews of our national parks on there. Hopefully it's better. Hopefully it's useful for you. And uh, you can make the trip decision off of our reviews or you can just listen to see how we liked it but anyways we're going to start off first category one out of five what was the awe factor i'll go like four and a half in in being being reality like i was in awe pretty much the whole time but there's that level of expectation Right, that that I, I I consider as a factor going into it, so just kind of like the fact that I wasn't it like I ex, I expected some of the shit we saw, like I wasn't blown away when you when you got to some of these locations and you're like oh like Stugali Canyon, still an amazing canyon, but I kind of knew what we would be getting into when we'd be there. Uh, when you get to that Skogafoss, the big waterfall, right? Like all the people there, right? Like. I kind of expected that at some of those places. And it, to me, it's like, it's cool. I mean, those are really cool waterfalls, but I mean, that those some of those elements take away those awe elements that you kind of thought, like, I don't know. I mean, it was different for sure. That's where, I mean, still up there. 4.5 out of 5 is a lot. Yeah, that it is. Uh, I am, for me, it's 5 out of 5 for it's similar reasoning to yours but actually very different right when having iceland i had expectations fairly high and i was kind of like worried that my expectations would ruin the trip and ruin iceland for me and iceland did not disappoint anything i went into thinking that it was going to be really legit was either as advertised or better than what it was when it came to the awe. Like driving around in the Fords was wild. Sitting out uh, by the hot spring overlooking the ocean. Like that's an, that right there can get you a five out of five awe, depending on where you're at. I so agree. Like, I, there were so I, many yeah. things that I was thinking could have ruined this, but it, like awe factor is five out of five. Right. No, fair. I mean, I was in awe too. I'm not, I'm not doubting it, but I was just, like I said, there's some of those places where you're like, I wish, I wish it was a little, a little bit better, you know? Um, And, and I think that is part of the expectation of, of some of these places. I did a lot of research, so I kind of expected some of the stuff like the plane crash to me, that's one that comes up as like, I think if we would have been there like middle of the day, we wouldn't as, as been in as awe. I think the fact that we walked it before that shuttle was going back and forth, before there were a lot of people there, I think I think that benefited us there. I do too. I, I do think that helps um, a lot with the crowds anyway, um, which actually it's a great segue into the second category uh, of the Wandering Ways review. Uh, this one is crowds. So uh, this one, a five out of five means that the crowds were very, very minimal. And a one out of five, uh, mainly because I don't think we've ever had a zero or contemplate a zero. So we're just going to go one out of five where the crowds were absolutely just way too many people. You felt like you're at uh, a zoo almost. 
Um, so crowds, what what do you give it? I give it a four point five again because like it really they weren't that bad, even in those places. Like we found parking spots in all those crowded places. Uh, even in cities, we found parking places just fine. We were able to navigate the cities just fine. Uh, we were in very remote places, too, during the majority of the trip. So the crowds were very minimal. I think there are opportunities to run into a lot of crowds, and we kind of avoided that. Um, but again, there were crowds at places like that, uh, uh, the, the hot springs we hiked to. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's there's a good time like people didn't want to I saw there were people who decided on not swimming once they got there because they didn't want to change at the like the weird change changing rooms everyone everyone I showed that picture to was all also like why why didn't they just build another like arm or something on on the ends like why did they just stop there and I'm like I get it but I think it's also the simplicity of it too and the fact that like nudity isn't that big of an issue in Europe I mean it's more of an American thing too so but I mean, there were crowds there. Skogavoss had crowds. Uh, that other waterfall had crowds. Um, the parking was kind of got kind of interesting at that point. But when we were in the cities, we had it. I mean, that just the normal tourist crowds, you know, that you'd see. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. For me, it's four out of five. You know, I think we got kind of lucky with our crowds. I think everywhere we, for the, I think a lot of the places that we got went could get very very crowded very very easily i i think the stugali canyon i think that's a recipe if we'd done that later middle of the day late or early afternoon uh early evening late afternoon type i think we're getting slammed with people uh when it comes the two waterfall like that southeast or southwest corner lots of people uh thing lots of people the you know so there's a lot of opportunity to run into people and i think for the most part we got kind of lucky that we didn't hit a lot of people which is why i'm giving it a four out of five um but you know i, I think a lot of it was kind of how we structured and got lucky with it Right. Well, and I think you look at, yeah, and I think part of that luck came from the time change and the fact that we were able to, like, be up at weird hours of the day uh, where the crowds were, pro- you know, were, are a lot similar and easier to adapt. Um, yeah, it wasn't bad. It was good. Um, I was trying to think, like, the ferry even wasn't that crowded. Um, we were able to find seats on the ferry just fine, indoors or outdoors, uh, mm-hmm. whatever kind of you choose. Yeah, no, hundred percent. The one waterfall with the bird, I think, could get crowded, and that biking village, I think, could get crowded during the day. I do too. I I I agree. I concur. Um, <clears throat> moving on to the next category, uh, we got on the Wandering Ways review, one out of five. What is? the likelihood or what was the wildlife possibility chance at seeing wildlife? What would you give it one out of five? (laughs) Five easy, straight up. I mean, the sheep are technically wild in a sense and you see them everywhere. The birds are everywhere. You were, you know, how easy was it for us to see seals at the seal beach? Like, you know what I mean? Like that, I saw seals at at the glacier lagoon. I saw seals, and dolphins in Husavik. I saw um, birds everywhere. Uh, we saw an Arctic fox. We saw the puffins. Like when you go to the areas, like I, they were there. I mean, wildlife was there, but there's also, you know, and then the reindeer too. We, we like didn't even think we'd see them. I, we didn't take pictures of those ones, but the ones we saw in that town, like yeah. they had horns, they had antlers. <laughs> the other ones I took pictures of didn't. But, uh, I mean, sheep, I mean, that is essentially what, like, there isn't wildlife there, but it's, it's the birds and it's the, it's the sheep and the horses in a sense too. That's fair. That's fair. I'm still giving it kind of that, uh, three and a half, four out of okay. five. Cause if you want to find wildlife, you definitely can. If you want to go see the puffins, you definitely can go see the puffins. Um, you know, the reindeer, 
I don't know. We got lucky. We weren't thinking we were going to see it. We got kind of lucky uh, finding it. So, you know, I think you might be able to find them easy. Arctic Fox, we got extremely lucky seeing. Um, you know, you might have to go do a little bit more work to see an Arctic Fox if you want to get. But in reality, like if you want to see wildlife, whether it's birds or mammals or uh, not really reptiles, but you can. But right. are you going to, if you're just a lay person kind of going through, you'll see some seabirds, you know, right. but outside that, yeah, that would be about it. And I'm not counting the sheep because yes, they're roaming wild, but they're not they're not wild. Dude, those things, I'm sure some of them are. I'm sure there's some sheep that are in those mountain areas because they are everywhere that it's like, no, they never come in. Yeah. I mean, it's very possible. There's so old some old lady said, fuck it. I'm not I'm not gonna round up sheep this year and just let them be. I'm sure of yeah. I'm sure of it up there because it's so remote, but, and they're cool. I mean, when, when you look at wildlife, you look at animals and the animal opportunities of that place, they're fucking everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is true. Uh, moving on next category, um, <clears throat> which will be our last one until we'll come at back to this at the very end after the five, our top five. Uh, but one out of five, what do you think of the camping in Iceland? I'd give it a five out of five. Um, they pack you in like sardines in some places and others it was wide open, but never was it an issue. You could roll in at 2 a.m. You could roll in at 5 p.m., 3 p.m., uh, 1 a.m., you know, leave at 8 a.m., 7 a.m. There's no, there was no real issues. They made it easy ways to pay. The campground hosts were very friendly people. They would come in and check on you at like on the hour kind of thing. Like not on the hour, like every hour, but just like, oh, eight o'clock, they'll be around and come by mm -hmm. eight o'clock, then they're gone by nine. Um just other other cool things. I mean, it was real simple, real easy. You know, it's one of those things you worry about, I think, on a trip like this, because of the van, you know. Um, and the van made it easy. I wouldn't have wanted to do it in a tent. I think my rating would be like a one. If it didn't, because <laughs> there were some of those nights where that sea wind and that sea breeze would have just been cold. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, for me, five out of five as well. The way camping is over there, it's so sweet. You just roll up. Uh, if you can fit, you you can stay. Type of deal. Um, roll up anytime. Uh, it's cheap super cheap i think it like the most was like 20 uh maybe like 25 bucks was the most expensive uh campsite that we had and that had a lot of amenities in it uh you know and even the campsites we went to that were really a lot cheaper still had decent amenities you know we were it was not hard to find a spot we could find any time didn't have to make reservations it was just pull up do sleep out of there in the morning I and mean, you could stay as long as you like type deal. So, you know, it camping over there is pretty chill. Even if you did the tent, you know, if you were doing the bike, the bike packing where you went and tented it, all that, like it would be easy to do it um, with the way they have it set up. No, definitely. It would be very easy. It'd be fun too. Um, to do all that even just like the like the you saw the trek vans as well as like the rv vans and the fact that a lot of them had the hookups too for those just to easily roll in and you know it, and it was crazy how like different in a sense that kind of atmosphere was run in comparison to america where it was like it wasn't like oh that's gonna be a hundred more dollars for that you know it, for them it was even reasonable like no you just you're plugging in for the night like we get it like that's you need that that's the way you're choosing to travel um which is cool i mean it was really really cool um even in the sense i think there's a lot of backcountry opportunities even in the van life the four by four van life that you could pull over and sleep in the just like on some of those backcountry campgrounds i think I, when i was researching maybe in the maybe. highlands area i don't know about the exterior of iceland well i think um, like the fjords and stuff too there's some of like those dirt roads that you could take and just like 
yeah, there might be uh, some possibilities there. But <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to do our top five favorite things from Iceland. Uh, we each have pictures loaded up, ready to go uh, for this one. Um, I'll start it off right okay. off the get go. Uh, my go. number five and the picture, while it does show where we were, it doesn't explain why it hit my top five. <laughs> so uh, top five is this lighthouse here. This was in okay, the second yeah. national park that we yeah. hit. Why this lighthouse? This is where the random ass obstacle course and the random ass zip line was. Um there. which was just so cool to me and which is why i i went with this one it was just so random so cool and it's a cool lighthouse if we're being uh all honest it's one of the taller ones that we saw um yeah you, it was very this cool. is the one this was the one lighthouse i heard you i think actually expressed joy at um in on the trip i i think all the other, i mean you were happy at the all the other ones but this one was like you're like that's a really cool lighthouse like just the way you said it you could just tell that like you really did enjoy this this spot um and it is a cool lighthouse it's a tall one um i guess you don't see them like that like you really do see them like with the houses and stuff at the bottom yeah and like this one's just the like tower yeah it, you cool. know it's definitely the more simpler ones of it um and it's it's a taller one, <clears throat> a lot of random stuff. Um, it's in that peninsula that we were at. This is the second wow. day of the trip. So yeah, that's Nan Snanis Fellajukul, I think it's yeah, I'm gonna butcher the names. That's why I'm not uh that's why I'm not trying to pronounce them. <laughs> it has the like A E letter in it where there's like a combination of an A and an E. Yeah. And you're just like, oh god, I don't know what that is. Right, um, my, my number five um here and i am sharing the screen i hope you can see that there was the arctic fox and the um that that kind of that drive we did to the arctic fox so oh. you had those two the small orange lighthouse and then the like a little bit bigger orange lighthouse but I know you were worried about this drive and I didn't, this was one of those things, I guess, when you talk about the awe of us being able to go in this area was, I thought this road was more of a sh shorter road than what it really was. Um, I didn't, I, I was expecting something like, oh yeah, just take it like a mile down and there'll be a lighthouse at the end of the road kind of thing. Uh, I wasn't expecting this. And and then just the fact that the Arctic Fox jumped out on us like that. I mean, you were able to really get a good glimpse of him when he crossed the road in front of you uh, because he yeah. jumped out. He jumped out of you on that side. Um, yeah, he jumped out. And I think you were looking down uh, when yeah. he jumped out. I was looking at my camera, looking at the lighthouse photos, I think, that we just took. And I switched lenses like that because I, I must have, you know, I had the camera in my hand. I jumped out and I got this one of him running. And you can, man, he's in full fucking stride here. But if I would have yeah. got him, if I would have got him to turn around or stop right there, when I first saw him, I was looking for him because he, they blend in good. Like you look at that white bushy tail, that brown fur, how that blends in with that lava rock. And it makes sense in the summer when they go to that color, in the winter, they're all white. Um, I was just like, I, I got to see him because he looked at me at first and then he took off and just dead sprint. Like I was able to get this photo because I saw the movement. And uh, it was neat. It was really neat. And uh, just the fact that like on all these trips that you and I have gone on, uh, you know, we had the bear and glacier, which was a really unique kind of encounter the way we were hiking and he crossed the path with us. And this, you know, an Arctic fox in, in Iceland, I think, I don't know if it's rare or not, but to me, it was, it was one of those animals that I was like, I don't think we'll see this here. Um, but if we do, I'll be super happy and excited. Um, that turtle in Hawaii, um, definitely some really good animal encounters over the years that just makes, makes number five for me. Yeah, that was a pretty good spot. Um, and I mean, who would have guessed that that was not the worst road we went on that whole trip? <laughs> right. right. In into the it, 
<laughs> Who would have thought the last going into eight? it? I thought it was gonna be. I was worried about that one, and then I was worried about the one to the cliffs. Those are the only two roads I was worried about, and uh, you know that one where we saw the fox. That was definitely worse than the one going out to the cliffs. The cliffs was just um, long. Yeah, the cliffs were just long. Really, what it was. Um, but, but I could see that one spot, maybe high, high tide or whatever season that is, where the buoys were, that runway for the buoys, maybe oh, getting yeah. flooded out. Um, but I think we hit it at a good time. Because cause remember, Iceland gets real snowy and icy. So probably like March, that's really boggy in that area. You know, that's why you have some of those sand dune areas too. Yeah, totally. Uh <clears throat> Number four for myself is the lava field. I thought uh, this one would make your list. I was curious when it would. Yeah, this one, <clears throat> it was one of those, you know, we were like, uh, you know, it's not, the lava's not flowing, so it's not going to be as cool as it could. If the lava was flowing, this would probably be at the top of the list uh, I've been seeing but like too from when it was flowing at this yeah. spot i mean it's like steaming so it's really cool you can see it's steaming but i remember walking when we got out of the van and we started walking up that first little hill right before we saw the lava field i wasn't sure what we'd see and i wasn't I wasn't expecting a whole lot. And then when we did get up there, I was like, holy shnikes. That is wicked cool. Well, right. And I guess exactly what you're saying is it feels like it makes sense when you're looking at it as if like you're looking at it like a lake because you're up on that hill and you're like, oh, it makes sense. It all flowed down. You can see it there at your video, right, where it's smoking. It all flowed down this hill and formed a bowl, formed this, like, lava lake, which you hear the term lava lake. So it's kind of like, like I said, it's putting me in a position to want to go back to a active volcano when it's active there or go to a volcano that's actively erupting and seeing lava because that you start you're you're getting the puzzle pieces and you're starting to see the picture you know what i mean yeah no 100% um so no it was it was definitely it was definitely way cooler than i thought um it was going to be so nice anyways you're number 4 my number 4 here is the Stugal, Stugal or Stugali Canyon. Um, I think that's pronounced like a D. It that one letter that has like the it's it's like a D slanted with the slot like the cross through it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Stugali Canyon, Stugal Canyon. Uh the geometry here of the rocks, this the shapes that they are, the the blue wat river water, and the canyon itself, the majesty, the magnificence of it. Uh, the hike to it was awesome. Um, the views of it, how big it really is, like to be able to actually walk down in it and experience it. You know, it's funny. You look at like a canyon like this and you see, you see right here how they're building the viewpoint and they're building a viewpoint on the other side of it is how they're trying to probably limit people from getting down in it, right? Eventually over time. And, and you think about that and you think about some of these places like if this was in the usa that you, you wouldn't be able to hike down there no they, they you wouldn't, wouldn't have, have. you'd be uh you'd, you'd be you'd, able to kind of get to right before the rocks that'd be as far right. as you could probably get um and you wouldn't you know, be able to go on top of like that um so like you would where, where the picture you have now um that you have like those rocks on the right there like you wouldn't be able to go down that they'd have it roped oh. off right there right to where we took states where we took the picture yeah yeah you're saying this and uh, i like that's even a little farther you know kind of closer to where you took this picture just a little bit up yeah yeah that's, up uh, like here that's where they would rope it off that'd be the farthest you can get if it was in the united states where you have and you wouldn't be able to get on top of that either. 
or maybe yeah. you could they but they'd have fencing there type deal boardwalk uh, or something yeah exactly yeah but i mean it's cool that like it's left this way it's very nature-esque you see the like how clear that water is i mean it was I, a really cool blue i i like it i am i wish we would have spent a little more time there i mean if, like i said i could spend hours fishing there <laughs> Um, cause just the way that water's moving nice and slow through there, you know, there's probably nice brown trout in that area. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a sweet little spot for sure. Uh, it was. Stugali Canyon did not disappoint. You need an LED lights for your vehicle? Look no further than our friends at Oxteo. Keeping our vehicles well lit while on the road while looking for Bigfoot. Make sure to use code RUGARU, R-U-G-A-R-U, on your next set of LED lights. Hey, hey there, Reverend. Um, I heard that you might be running dry on your sticker supplier. Yeah, I've been looking around and I've kind of like run out of cool stickers to buy and put on water bottles and stuff. Well, I, I mean, have you seen the stuff Josh has been coming out with lately? No, I have not. Well, he is doing some really cool stuff with the Shop LS574. Yes, they're working with indigenous communities and making some really cool stickers. Um, he has a really cool buffalo mountain sticker. There's even water bottles, hats, sweatshirts, the whole swag. And we even got a discount code for you guys. Yes, if you use Wandering Ways at Shop LS574, you're going to be getting a discount on your next purchase. But not only that, you're going to be giving a percentage of that sale to the Little Shell Tribe, as well as they donate a dollar of every sale to murdered and missing indigenous women. So just such a cool thing going on there. You know, you use the code Wandering Ways, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G-W-A-Y-S, and you put that in there, boom, you're getting a discount. The Wild West is full of dangers, from snakes to bears. The outdoorsman must be prepared. That is why when you experience rivers like the San Juan or the Yellowstone, you must bring a blue ribbon net. Handcrafted and biodegradable, these classic wooden fishing nets are all you need while on the river. Make sure to use code RUGARU10 when checking out at Blue Ribbon Nets. Again, the code is RUGARU10. R-U-G-A-R-U-1-0. All right, moving on. We're into the last three. So top three favorite things we did from Iceland. Uh, moving on to my number three. And again, the picture, while it's an amazing picture, doesn't actually do the whole justice for why I picked it as uh, number three. Um, but for me, number three was just the Husavik kind of area. Um, there. You know, it had the the port there with all the boats that were really, really cool. Uh, we That's where we jumped on the trampoline the longest. Uh, we had this absolute banger of a view. Uh, we got to experience the no uh, sunset, sunrise in Husavik. Uh, the hot springs were amazing. Watching the dolphins from the hot springs. Um, just Husavik in general there uh, was definitely pretty sweet to like go. Uh, it was a definite highlight of the trip. I mean, top three. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 to, when you, yeah, right. When you we talk about this place, especially when we talk about Iceland, it's, it's crazy because like this is one of those places like if I ever go back to Iceland, I'm going up, up, up north. Like you bet your ass I'm going back up north, right? Kind of like I'm not uh i'm not counting this out on a trip uh this this area was too cool um definitely would like maybe take actually take a whale tour especially when you hear the success rates uh might be worth it up there especially on a calm day like that nice hot summer day when the water's just flat oh you know the whales love that shit Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean we only got a taste I think of what Husavik really can be. Uh right. But the the north this part of iceland that northern part north east part um i think there's a lot of hidden gems in that area so 
I mean, if it's anything like Husevic, it's going to be pretty sweet. Really any, yeah, no, any of these North points, uh, even like where we did the tunnels, those little towns up there where you could tell had, had those awesome hidden gems, like you're saying, you know. Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, just because I know you're curious. Uh, you know, I can't remember if we mentioned it on the other reviews. Uh, but so far, no speeding ticket has come my way. Uh, so oh, we'll that's have to, good. yeah, yeah, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see kind of how, uh, if that continues, uh, if I get way scot free. So, uh, you should, right. uh, I'll keep you all posted. No, no, I'm, I'm, I am curious because, uh, it did, fl- it didn't flash flash, but it, the three red flashes were, were what was kind of what, what got me. And then you're like, you see the sign and you're like, I saw a sign before that tunnel that said there's a camera in here. Um, yeah. That, I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad. I mean, there's still, there's still a chance. There's still an option of getting that, but I mean, it's something you frame, I guess. Right. That's exactly what I'm going to do uh, when it comes yeah. down to it. Um, My number three, and I'm sure this one might make your list in a different shape or form. It's kind of that diamond beach or that jokel solorn uh, glacier lagoon um and in the back you can kind of see the glacier and the glacier pieces melting off into the glacier lagoon lake uh that it uh, naturally... this is one of my favorite pictures it might be my favorite picture from uh, if you just going off pictures this might be my <laughs> favorite one that you've taken um from it because oh, this, this one the framing of it and with the low fog and the ice there like it turned out really really good well and we didn't get that like fog that long either so that was kind of cool uh how like that was definitely you could tell the weather the sun was hitting it just right to get that cold mist whatever from this glacierly fed like river that's basically what this river is created by is the glacier melting Mm -hmm. and and headed out to sea and then you have the seawater mixing right here with the glacier water, which is really cool. And I'm sure that's why all those birds are there. I'm sure there's good fish. I'm sure there's good food, good stuff. Uh, Cause that like when we hiked up b- behind the glacier kind of, or to go actually see that where like these pictures were taken, um, we were able to uh, get, we were kind of away from the birds, you know, where like this one, there was a ton of birds um, there. I also saw seals uh, swimming around in this area. Yeah, I was just going to say, we also saw seals, like, right where the birds are there. Yeah, exactly, which was really cool. I mean, this was a really, really cool spot. I do like this photo. I'm thinking it would even look good, like, horizontal, like, a nice, like, panorama, like, if you cut it kind of at the right angles. Yeah, if you uh, do the, was it the 16-9 um, ratio, um, this, this will work really well um, for that one. This is one... Uh, you know, if you have the right wall, this is a good big picture, like up on a wall. Yeah, um, that's I, I you know, and then you get the blue, that blue iceberg right in the middle underneath the bridge, I think is a good touch. Yeah, um, yeah. no, this and they uh, were that blue. Like, that's they, the coolest yeah. part. No, 100%. They were. They, it was, it was wild. Uh, wild. This one was another kind of trippy one. Um, you know, well, for one thing, uh, this actually this area makes my number two. Um, oh, that's good. So, just roll right into it. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's essentially. I'm just gonna roll right into it. Um, but I'll this this was share. like one of the um, kind of surprises in reality when it comes down to it. Um, because we had heard, or at least I heard, that uh, this was overrated and that the the icebergs that go on the beach for diamond beach aren't as big as they look um you know it's just kind of and i think it helped the time of day that we went to it because the crowds were definitely less i mean still a good amount of people um but you can tell that area gets a lot of people (laughs) and i can see where that overrated overrated aspect comes into play based on just how the facilities alone that are established there 
the show you that a lot. Of, I mean, there were a decent amount of people when we showed up, but it was like nine o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. And so and that's the craziest you know, part was, about these photos. <laughs> it really is like yeah. nine o'clock at night when you're taking this video. I know. And that in the freaking sun's like way up in the air. You're like, okay, that it doesn't look like nine o'clock right there. Uh, but no, this one. I mean, you know, we're driving in and you can see the one beach and you can see like the icebergs on the beach there. And we're like, oh, shit, we got to find a parking spot to like go. And we took like the first one that took us to that parking spot. Turned out to be a great spot to park, uh, yeah. you know. So it was definitely it was kind of a surprise. You know, I was excited. I was like, oh, we're going to stop. It's gonna, we're going to see a cool thing, possibly. Um, then when we got there, it was like, oh, well, damn. This is this is way more legit than I thought. No, it was it it was a lot cooler. It was I guess it was more of a surprise because I didn't like I guess I I didn't really realize like what Diamond Beach was. I thought it would be kind of what you're saying where it's like these small and it makes sense because some of the videos probably are coming from like July and August when the ice is smaller. Um, and I'm sure going there in April, May is even different. Um, which I think is, I think that's probably the coolest thing about Iceland is, is if you are able to experience the seasons there, I'm sure you get some cool extremes and some cool, uh, pictures and some scenery, which I bet is just amazing. Uh, that diamond beach, uh, again, I'd go back there. I mean, top three. Yeah, no, I, I would go back to this area for sure. I would even contemplate doing the like, uh, glacier tour, uh, there i think it would be yeah i think it would be worth it uh i wasn't expecting that much ice in the water just sitting there um i was kind of expecting the the shelf of the glacier and then just open water i wasn't expecting like if you got in a boat you're gonna have to maneuver through ice right i think come like august and stuff it is though more Maybe, yeah a... it very well could be you know yeah um I'm going to, I'm going to share my number two and this, this straight up the puffins were my number two. Uh, fantastic little creatures, fantastic little animals. They um, are beautiful. I mean, just beautiful birds, cool looking birds, fun, fun birds. Um, those cliffs that they nest on are just, were amazing. Um, I really, was blown away and it made I guess it made sense to me when you think about and then you think about the Westman Islands where where they say that large puffin colony is closer to Reykjavik on the south that south end it must make sense of like how the shelf the cliff shelf must be in that area uh because these guys nest kind of delicately uh in those areas yeah. and it makes sense why you would look at species like this and say oh they're going endangered uh based on certain resources lack of resources on the cliffs lack of resources in the sea with the fish because they they hunt fish and that would have been really cool to see you know when when they have all the because they can fit like 10 little fish in their in their big be beaks there uh which i think would be kind of cool to see yeah no the the puffins were definitely um and these are great photos uh of them right you know another kind of surprise when it came down to uh, the trip, you know, because it was, it was like, all right, we're going to probably see some puffins, but we're going to see them from a distance. They're going to be sitting on the cliff uh, type deal. And sure enough, we're like, we get there. And I don't know about you, but I low key started having a little doubt with the way the cliffs were that we were going to see um, any. And then we got to that first lookout spot. And we're looking and there's no puffins there. And I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to get scoped out of puffins. And then, shit you not, like maybe a minute after I thought this, that one puffin uh, just popped up, like maybe right. six feet from us. Right. Just on the side, just like, boop, 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 going to do yeah. its thing. And you had like the, the two that were kind of laying there and you're like, oh, is this really what it is? And then you started it we're like let's keep walking let's keep walking we walked further and like you're we're not necessarily seeing them uh nor are we like seeing more or less and then we see that one and we're like we're so remote we're away from everybody let's have our moment with this and then walking back down i think was really cool because we saw so much more i think on the walk down 
Yeah, uh, but... no, for sure. Uh, yeah, were... I mean, I'm just going to kind of piggyback off it because um, my number one is actually uh, the, uh, whoop, no, that's just me at the uh, the icebergs right. there. Uh, there my number that's one is of the um, Puffins and the Cliffs. I grouped them all together. Right. Um, oh, and I knew you really liked those cliffs, man. Those are some epic. I mean, they're huge. I, I show people that I have that one video on Instagram right now, Zach Wandering Ways. It's the first picture or the first video of a puff and a hound there. And, and I slow mow it just because it's like you can see the other people standing on the cliff. And yeah. I'm like, like, look at like, there's your photo right there. Zoom in on that, like one spot where the, like those people are like, those are people right there. Yeah, there's there's a group. There's <sighs> little people you can see. um way over there yeah this was just it's wild because it's just an absolute shelf you know and you see all the birds you know in this picture and they're you know they have to kind of look to see them uh and so i mean it was just absolutely wild to see to be at these cliffs and if i'm being honest it's not like it's anything i haven't necessarily seen this is a very oregon coast kind of like look with this um but the sheer size uh one the color of the water was very blue uh and then right. just having the ability to see like the puffins you know chilling on the better. side like here was uh, just absolutely back, wild go back to your other photo there you could even see which i think is really cool that snanas fagel jokul uh peninsula you can yeah no, see i'm trying to one second no worries, no worries. Uh, but yeah, no, these puffins are amazing. They're beautiful birds. Uh, really neat to see. I, you know, I, I, I'm like you in the sense of like, fuck, I want to like looking at these photos. It's like, I want to print them out, but I'm like, where, like, where do I have space? Uh, to put them. Yeah. Uh, but right there, right. You can see right in the middle. There's that that mountain with the glacier on it. Yeah, right there. Oh, you know what? I forgot um about that. Uh, that, that was, we I could. Think... You know, because that's where we were like 24 hours before we were at this. Um, right. And I think that wild. was one of the coolest parts. And I think even when you turn kind of the other way, I have a picture of it, uh, not readily available, but when you turn almost the other way here, not like more like 90 degrees to the left and you look down the cliffs that way because you're looking like north up the up the fjords up that way and it yeah. looks just cliffs like this going all the way up um and you're just like damn like this is some intense place and i know with you being a coastal person growing up on the coast like seeing the seals to you was nothing like me i'm like i never see seals so like i'm like hell yeah but like to see you blown away here, I'm like, yeah, no, you know this is a really cool, like, oceany spot with the coasties blown away. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, hundred percent. Because I, I mean, again, this what? isn't, you know, you could almost argue, like, okay, where in Oregon is this picture taken? Ar yeah, arguably, yeah. No, exactly. It's like me with mountains, man. It's like you get those East Coasters who are like, oh my god, and I'm like, let me show you these mountains. Yeah, no, uh, exactly. So it, it was like, the cliffs were just wild. It just <laughs> and that's let me show you these cliffs. Um, my numero uno, number one. Uh, going back, it's made your top three, but it was Husavik. It was the geothermal sea baths. It was the lighthouse. Uh, I lost my screen. There we go. And just the the wow of uh, that sunset, being able to see those north uh, peninsulas that we were able to go through the tunnels and just look out at the ocean to see the dolphins, like you're saying, jump like that one jumped twenty times in a row out of the water, like doing the For like real. dolphin arc, like choo choo choo, like you don't see that all the time, which that was awesome. Yeah. Um, I like that all the lighthouses were similar but different in ways because like there were white ones that looked like this, but this was kind of like a yellowy orange. Um, the views looking out were great. I mean, here I took a picture of the hot spring. I thought that you know that's probably one of my favorite hot springs in the entire world is this one right here. It's if I had a top five hot springs list, this is number one. 
Um, I really liked the spa type aspect of it. I liked the fact that if you wanted, you could go up here and order a drink at the bar uh, in the water. Your you, The view was amazing. I could probably spend hours there. That sunset was amazing. The fact that, like you said, that, we're, that we were exp- being able to experience the sun never setting and just that sun in up in the north there, it just sat there and did, did circles above your head. Uh, it yeah. didn't, you know, it didn't, it didn't go down. It didn't go up. It was, uh, it was really cool. You know, the earth's round guys <laughs> is, is, is what I learned on this trip. No, uh, it was just fantastic and beautiful. And I think it was a June was a great time of year to be in Iceland. I think yeah, weather we got up here in the Northeast area was just phenomenal. Like we got like 70 degree days, yeah. which was, just, Oh my God, they're beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I like uh, those days of the trip, those few days of the trip to me, in my mind, were the like, like the best because it just everything was just it was so simple, it was so beautiful, it was so nice, it was just fun and enjoyable and being outdoors, you know what I mean? Like, it was just like hell fucking yeah, man. Yeah, no, days, what was it, days two, three, and four. We're definitely like the peak of the the trip when it comes down because right. it was you know it was the peninsula which we saw a lot there and there was a lot of different stuff and it was a lot of cool stuff and then the next day was the whole ferry to the cliffs and then the day after that was wild tunnels and then uh you know going getting all the way to Husavik. Uh, you know seeing the cool towns that you're we're kind of driving through so you know those were definitely two three four were the best the best days of a really of a great trip i want to go back really i really do yeah I'm now like, i know uh, someone asked me they asked me uh would you go back and i said like, oh yeah we barely scratched it <laughs> right like you just like you almost like I'm almost kicking myself now to be like, man, like why couldn't we done like a two weeker? I know that would have been long, but it would have been amazing. You were, um, you know, doing long. it doing it longer would be pretty sweet, and then getting a four by four van, four by four off road van, uh, would be the next thing I would probably. Um, not that our van didn't do great. The thing was a champ, <laughs> but that's the, uh, it's the driver, man. It's not it's not the it's not the the car. It's the driver. I just my favorite part. My favorite part with the van was when we returned it, and the you know <laughs> she does the lap around to see if there's any dings or anything like that. And she goes like, "Oh, a little muddy, but that's okay." <laughs> and muddy. we were we were definitely a lot dustier than. Uh, any other van there by a lot even the ones with like snorkels and and four by four if we it was like oh which van was those guys yeah it was the uh, yeah exactly yeah no it really was anyways um that's our top five we're gonna close it off with our last two categories of the wandering ways review uh the one before the big one we always ask it. It's one of the most important ones we do. We have a lot of people that are curious because they'll make trips all the way around this. But what's the chance of seeing Bigfoot? One to five. One. Uh, yeah. I, there's not a lot of trees, and there are not a lot of big trees. Uh, and I, from my understanding, Bigfoot likes big trees. I didn't see any lore. If there is any lore in this area, I think it's trolls. Uh, if you're into the the fantasy lore, I think trolls are Iceland. Um, it's kind of what I saw. Hundred percent, one out of five. I don't think you're gonna find Bigfoot here. Um, you know, if there was ever a zero, it would probably be for this category on seeing Bigfoot. Um, there's just there's not trees for him to hide in. Uh, we didn't hear any murmurs, any uh, any myths, any rumors of Bigfoot. Um, again, like you said, if there's anything, it's probably going to be trolls because uh, we saw troll stuff. But again, we didn't hear a lot of it. Uh, maybe we need to investigate more into the trolls. Uh, but yeah, one out of five chance of seeing Bigfoot in Iceland is not the best. Uh, maybe it's too cold. 
But the last category, it's the big one. It's overall, what are you ranking the trip? One out of five overall Iceland. Hmm. Five out of five. Uh, uh, see, I was thinking you were going to say one there for a second. <laughs> no, this was this an was, uh, absolute banger of a time. This was a great trip. It was a fun trip. It was an amazing trip. It's one of those things like, I mean, I, I can't stop looking at the photos. I, you know, they're all on my phone. All the videos are on my phone. Like, I, I can't stop. Like, I'm just in, in awe. And then just the fact of like, doing it and like looking back at what we did and just what we saw and what we accomplished in that sense of like how people you know they're, they're like it's not like it's funny because like you hear people like oh i went to mexico or oh i went to like france or the uk or belize or some of these like yeah they're crazy cool places but then when you when you throw iceland out there they're almost like what why would you go there what what's there what I mean, they, and, but, or like, oh, I want to go. Like, that seems amazing. Or that's just like, it seems so far out and remote and just, it's not first of mind. And I, 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 I didn't guess realize that right away um, going into the trip or even doing the trip. Like, that's something that's kind of been an afterthought. And I'm just like, holy shit. Like, we did do something cool. We did go up almost to the Arctic Circle and, dick around for a few days like that's that's fun like why not like why not go explore and see this world you know it's shows us this world in my mind it's really not that big and we're not that different when you really look at it and we just need to go experience it and understand like people just want to live and be happy and and ex- see the world and see that and be happy in the places in the world um there's so many happy people there man you could just see it it was awesome a uh, hundred, hundred percent, hundred, hundred, hundred percent. Uh, one out of five for me. It's a five out of five. Uh, this is a bucket list item. Uh, it's been a bucket list item for me. Uh, I think, I think since like the drought back in fifteen, I have wanted to go to Iceland. Um, uh, also, it's a big trip. It was a big banger trip because it was a camper van. I've always wanted to travel around do it in a camper van like we hit a lot of boxes for me that made the trip like extra extra awesome and iceland did not disappoint i was you know you have reasons for putting it on the bucket list now that i went i understand why i put it on the bucket list you know i get to scratch it off um which is great because i got to experience what i thought it was going to be it was everything i wanted and more um of a trip so, you know, five out of five is amazing. Uh, can't wait. It re- revitalized that, like, travel kind of bug. I just want to get out, do stuff, uh, go see exotic places, meet people I don't know, go just sit in a random pub and say hi to a random person next to me or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, anyways, yeah. that means That's it's time. Oh no, you got I'm closing off with final words. Just, so if you got something before thing, final words. That's something I don't think we did enough of on this trip was actually being able to sit down with people and, and talk with them because of the time difference of like how we were so thrown off. And the fact that like things closed at like 5 p.m. there. Like they're open for like five hours, which is cool, but like kind of sucked uh for those opportunities. Yeah, that would definitely that'd be one of the things I'd probably change of the trip is to try and get in and see the people more. Uh, But with the itinerary that we had, um, the hours and everything, like it it would have been hard to fit in. Um, So, you know, I get it. Uh, It's still nice to go. But anyways, we're going to move on to the final words. So final words, my guy. Um, definitely go find these trips, go find these places, go explore these places, create a top five of the places you go to, uh, because I think that helps you want to go experience more for sure. Um, like I definitely want to go back, but I'm also excited to go to these other destinations and other places, uh, that are on those bucket lists. You know what I mean? Like Africa's on my list. Asia's on my list. Japan's on my list. Australia's on my list. Antarctica. Fuck, Iceland, going to Iceland made me want to go to Antarctica so bad. Uh, and I would like to take the Wandering Ways 
team to Antarctica. So if there's anyone who wants to sponsor us on a trip down there, please reach out. Um, we are always looking for fun trips to go on and do. Um, and just, just, you get those trout, like you're saying, those travel bugs, those inspirations, those places that I'm just, I'm looking at the map of Iceland right now. I'm like, I can just see the line we did, but all the other lines that we didn't do and all the cool places, you know, that are along those lines. Um, I want to also throw out that me and Matt have a podcast dropping at the end of August. It is a native podcast with Matt and Zach, where we talk all things Native American, Alaska Native, and we'll even talk about our indigenous uh, Hawaiians as well. Over time, trying to educate those uh, and help those better understand our communities and our cultures uh, and really getting kind of behind that. Um, definitely check it out. Hit us up. We got stickers for that too. So uh, that's about it. That's about all I got going. Love it. Love it. Reverence, final words of wisdom. Stay beautiful, everybody. I can't tell you how much I appreciate every single one of you for doing, uh, listening, doing your thing, being a part of uh, the journey that uh, we have gone on uh, today. I... I've been reading the news, been paying attention, and I just want to make sure that this gets out there so that way they know uh, my side of the things. Um, but to all of the orcas out there, if you see me, understand I'm all, I'm team fuck SeaWorld, so don't mess with my boat, right? And you guys have been taking out some boats and I'm all for you. I just wanted to let you know I'm on your guys' side in this uh, revolution. Uh, I am all for you out there. Um, so I'm team free Lyota uh, from Miami uh, Sea Aquarium. You know, I'm free, free the whales. I'm on your side. So if you see me on a boat, be like, hey, this guy checks out. Let's bounce. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm fair, fair. Uh, Definitely fair. Needs to be, needs to be out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, peace out, everybody. Bye.